This is a hallway in the bone marrow transplant unit at Shands Hospital at the University of Florida. Here, cancer patients are undergoing aggressive treatments aimed at curing the disease. These treatments have tremendously debilitating side effects. At this hospital, medical scientists have additional resources to bring their patients healing a wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. Shan's Arts and Medicine program was founded in 1991 by John Grampole, a pediatric oncologist, poet, and clown, and by Mary Rockwood Lane, a nurse and painter. The program brings artists in all media into the hospital. These artists bring elevated human contact, encourage the imaginative development of personally expressive metaphor and imagery, and facilitate the embodiment of that imagery. In 1994, Jill Sankey Henderson joined the Arts and Medicine program as the first dancer in residence, establishing her Dance for Life program. I am Rusty Brandman, and I joined her in 1996. And in 1998, I brought dance to Shands at Alachua General Hospital with my healing motion approach. Through the Center for the Arts and Healthcare Research and Education, we are teaching our approach to using dance as a healing modality. We work with patients making dance at the bedside. Participation is completely voluntary, and the level of involvement and specific nature of the process is guided by patient interest. In general, we have found that there are several bridges to cross with the patient and that the process parallels the form of age-old rituals. Hey, Natasha. Hi. Good to see you again. Hi. Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. I see you've been writing on the sheets. Yes. In huh? sync. In sync. Ah, in sync rules. What else? Have? First, we must make a human connection. When the patient is ready to participate, we generally spend some time just getting to know each other. Oh, okay. right. hey. So, Miss Bria, do, do you want to tell us why you're here? Okay. Because I had surgery on my mother. She had a really special kind of surgery. Bill had met Bria before her surgery and learned that she was active as a cheerleader and also liked to draw. Here, she is introducing me to Bria after the surgery has been successfully completed. The third person ever to have this surgery? The third person that Dr. Barry can um, do the surgery and the 13th person in the United States. That is so amazing. That is really, yep. So you like cheerleading. What else do you like to do? Painting. Painting. You did some beautiful painting last week. And we're going to make a tile, aren't we? Yeah. What are you going to put on that tile? A rainbow. Oh, that's great. What colors? Every color. <laughs> what else do you like to do? Part of my leg put back together, taken out and put back together, and I know it was hard. So you're smiling. <laughs> so I'm just in awe. Did you see your leg? Is it big? <laughs> Rusty's got pretty big after that I surgery. Mine got pretty big. Oh, you got yours all tied up mm. there. Pretty good. Can you wiggle your toes? She can wiggle her toes. Yeah. So she can do a little toe dancing. Sometimes we make this connection while actually moving or making some other kind of art together. Daquan is in the bone marrow transplant unit, and the sound you hear in the background is caused by forced clean airflow to help maintain a sterile environment. He immediately said that he would like to do something, but he didn't really know what. I had asked him what he liked to do when he was not in the hospital, and he said he liked to walk. So we did silly walks together as we talked and learned more about each other. Drink. 
As we cross this bridge to relationship, we are often also accomplishing the first stage of rituals, the separation from the everyday or logical, making a shift to the right brain mode of consciousness and giving ourselves permission to use our imaginations. Sometimes this separation stage continues onto the next bridge. Once we have established some level of acquaintance and trust with the patient, we can bridge into creativity. We find ways to facilitate the identification of significant metaphor and imagery and ways to embody this imagery. This enhances the patient's capacities to heal because the body reacts to imagery held in the mind as if it were real. The same neural pathways are activated and the same hormones and neurotransmitters are released. He was a fireman. Ah. And we used to go up into the swamps. It was a folk worship of berries. Oh. And I'd slaughter on his boots. Oh, yes. If the patient is engaged in the process, she will experience some kind of change, whether her participation is active or passive. Gladys was too weak to move for herself, so I danced for her from imagery she had given me from her youth. She grew up in New England and vividly remembers slogging through the bog to pick blueberries. As the process continues, we often cross another bridge to a patient-led creative transformation. After following my silly walks for a while as we talked, Taquan asked me what I liked to do. When I told him that I enjoyed bicycling, he suggested that we ride bikes, symbolically of course, and then he provided all the imagery for our imaginary bike ride to the store to buy candy. Natasha was ready and able to lead the process from the very beginning. Since neither one of us had been to the beach for a while, we are dancing beach imagery here. We are using music as well as scarves as props to enhance the vividness of the image by involving more sensory modes. Well, Ms. Bria, do you want to do anything else today? When the creative journey seems complete, or some change of state has occurred, we seek a closure to the process and a symbolic way to return to the everyday world with something gained along the journey. Yeah, Thank you for that. granting us the interview. <laughs> Say thank you. Okay. Tell thank them you. thank you. Oh. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you remember any of the Do you? Because dance is so ephemeral, we often leave the patient with the gift of a small sample of movement expressive of the essence of our shared journey. Here I gave Daquan one more silly walk to use whenever he feels the need for activity within his limited space. We call these movement motifs, movement well, prayers, good. meditations, or poems. Um, we make the movement something that the patient can easily perform herself to recall and refresh the experience at will, like this stylized movement from the life story dance I had done for Gladys. I gave Natasha a short motif from our shared jungle dance. 
She returned the gift to me by developing the movement into a whole solo, her personal power dance. Something for you to do yourself. You're seeing all this um, brightness, wildness coming at you and washing over you, something like that. Just something that little. Ready? Mm hmm. Involvement in dance and other creative activities can enhance healing mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mentally, creative activity provides distraction positive imagery, and the empowerment of self-expression. Imagery and art making connect with the physical body through neural and chemical activity to stimulate the immune system. Engaging in a creative process also transforms our state of consciousness and establishes or reinforces our connections with self, others, and spiritual beliefs. Dance can be a particularly powerful expression for patients as it allows them to connect with their bodies in a positive way. Dance, music, visual and literary arts can transform an ordinary space and even the sterile space of a hospital into a healing environment full of light, color, beauty, and hope.